Hello everyone, welcome back to our Knights of the Old Republic Let's Play. Last we uh, left off, we were looking for some authorization papers so we can get into the Undercity. And the only place we really have left to go is this hidden back um, base. Hey, you can't just walk in here. This is the hidden back base. How do I know you're not a Vulcan spy sent to kill Gadon Thek? Yeah, I think we've had this conversation earlier, but that voice actress just gets on my nerves. I don't know who she is. I'm sorry, random person. I need Gadon's help. I was told to speak to him. A lot of people want to go inside and speak to Gadon. He's a hero of the common folk. But the days of the Hidden Beck's open-door policy are gone. Between the Sith Conquest and the Valkyrie Gang War, Gadon has more enemies than he used to. We're being careful about who we let in now. Alright, so I could persuade with a bribe, but you don't really even need to do that, so... Maybe I could be an ally against all those enemies. Well, we do need all the help we can get. And you don't look like you're with the Vulkers or the Sith. Besides, it's not like you can do anything to harm Gadden in the heart of his own base. Not with Zedra watching his back. So you're gonna let me in? Go in and speak to Gadden if you want. Just remember to be on your best behavior. The hidden Becks are watching you. Ooh. I'm afraid. Oh, wait. Not really. They're watching me. That means they're watching you guys out there in YouTube land, too. Look behind you. It's a hidden Beck. It was hidden behind you. Oh, oh. I just slapped my knee metaphorically right there. I would do it literally, but I'm kind of busy controlling my character. I'm checking out uh, some of the random things. You can't go further than this. Uh, if you try to unlock something, uh, you'll get an impossible. As you can see, uh, this place has looked a or this place is a little broken down. I don't know if it's looked better. I guess I can't say that, but I assumed it's. I assume that it probably has seen better days. But before we talk to Gaden, we're just gonna explore a few things. Okay, so we can't we can't go into the control room if I'm remembering right. It says impossible. On it. Damn. Yep. Man, the echo. But there is something in here. It's just computer parts and antidote kits and but you know we'll take what we can get. Nothing real special. And uh, you can talk to these guys, but they don't say anything really important. It's not really like a conversation tree. Like they'll say one thing to you, and that's it. All right. Let's... Hold it right there. Who are you, and what is your business with Gadden? Calm down, Zerdra. Nobody's going to try anything here in the middle of our own base. It would be a suicide mission. <laughs> You're too trusting, Gadden. Breshek and his Vulkers want you dead. Anyone we don't know is a potential threat, and it's my job to make sure you're safe. Do you want us to start attacking strangers on sight, Zerdra? Like the Vulkas do? I will never let it come to that. Now step aside and let them pass. As you wish. You can speak to Gadden if you want, but I've got my eye on you. You try anything and you'll be vaporized before you can say Vulcar spy. I really like how Zedra and um, Gaiden look. Like, I really like Zedra's purple. And um, you see Gaiden when... You, you saw him a little bit, but as you see him closer, he, he just has a really neat look about him. You'll have to forgive Zedra. Ever since Bredrick and the Vulkers began this war against us, she's been a little overzealous in her security duties. The problems with the Sith haven't helped things. Zerdra seems to forget that I know how to look after myself. Now, how can I help you? I need information on those Republic escape pods that crashed in the Undercity. The escape pods? You know, I heard the Sith have been asking around the Upper City about them as well. But you don't look like you're with the Sith. They might be spies, Gadden. They might be working for the Sith. Calm down, Zerdra. <laughs> if the Sith thought we knew anything useful, they'd have a battalion of troops kicking down our door. No, I think this offworlder has her own agenda. Don't worry. I'm not working for the Sith. I suppose I could tell you what I know. It's not like it could do any harm to me or my gang. But it might cause problems for the Vulcas, and that's okay in my book. The Vulcas stripped those pods clean within hours after they landed. It's too bad we didn't get there first, considering what my spies reported the Vulcas found. A female Republic officer named Bastila survived the crash. 
We Becks don't believe in intergalactic slavery, but the Volkers aren't so picky. They took a prisoner. Vastel is a slave? What will happen to her now? Normally, the Vulkers would take a captured slave and sell them for a nice profit to Davik, or an off-world slaver. But a Republic officer is no ordinary catch. I still think Bastila is just a Republic officer. That could work to our advantage. Maybe she'll even figure out a way to escape from the Vulker base on her own. She's too valuable to leave with the Vulker scum at the base. Brezhik's probably got your Republic friend hidden away somewhere safe until the big swoop race. You'll never find her. Swoop race? What does that have to do with it? I'm afraid your friend has become a pawn in Brezhik's game to take over the lower city. He's offered her up as the Vulcan's share of the prize in the annual Swoop Gang race. By putting up such a valuable prize, Brezhik hopes to win the loyalty of some of the smaller gangs. Their numbers will allow him to finally destroy me and my followers. So how do you propose we go about rescuing Bastila then? Well, we can't fight all the gangs. The only hope you have of rescuing Bastila is to somehow win the big season opener of the swoop race. But I don't even have a swoop bike. I might be able to help you with this. If you'd be willing to help us. We both have something to gain here. And much to lose. What are you proposing? The swoop race is for the lower city gangs only. I could sponsor you as a rider for the Hiddenbecks this year. If you win the race, you'll win your friend's freedom. But first, you have to do something for me. My mechanics have developed an accelerator for a swoop engine. A bike with the accelerator installed can beat any other swoop out there. But the Vulkers stole the prototype from us. They plan to use it to guarantee a victory in this year's swoop race. I need you to break into their base and steal it back. How am I supposed to get inside the Volker base? Getting into the Volker base won't be easy. The front doors are locked tight. But I know someone who might be able to get you in the back way. Mission Veo. Mission? Gaddon, you can't be serious. She's just a kid. How is she supposed to help them with this? Mission's explored every step of every back alley in the lower city. Plus, she knows the undercity sewers better than anyone. If anyone can get inside the Volker base, it's her. Where can I find Mission? She and her Wookiee friend Zalbar are always looking to stir up a little excitement. They like to go exploring in the Undercity, despite the dangers. Your best bet is to look for her in the Undercity. But you'll need some way past the Sith Guard post at the elevator. I got past the Upper City Guard, no problem. A simple disguise might have worked on the Upper City Guard, but the security down here is much tougher. You'll need the proper papers to get past him. Luckily, my gang ambushed one of the Sith patrols headed down to the Undercity. They never made it, and their security papers fell into my hands. Since we're working together now, I suppose I could give them to you in exchange for your uniforms. With the security papers, you won't need a disguise anyway. What do you want with the Sith uniforms? I like to be prepared. Eventually, the Sith are going to try to drive us out of the Undercity. Sith disguises might give my people the edge we need in a crucial battle. Okay, I'll trade the uniforms for the papers. Good choice. Thanks for the uniforms. You won't need them with these security papers anyway. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? I'll be back when I get the prototype accelerator. I suggest you hurry. The swoop race is coming up, and we want you to have time to practice before the race. Alright, so, uh, as you notice, I was pretty nicey-nicey with him. I didn't do much arguing, and that's because no matter what you do, you're pretty much stuck if you don't uh, strike a deal with him. He won't, like, you have to give up your Sith uniforms, and they're not that useful, and they don't give you much of a bonus anyway. So, uh, but I do really like the follow-up conversation you're going to have with Gaden, so we're going to talk to him again. You have returned. Do you have the prototype swoop engine accelerator with you? I want to ask you some questions. Your time would probably be better spent going after the prototype swoop engine the Vulcan stole from us. But I'll answer your questions if I can. As you can see, there's a lot of different questions, but a lot of them are uh, about, like, can, can, you know, can I find mission again? Is there a way off the planet? Um, and then you can break up the thing. Uh, we'll talk about the war a little bit, but uh, my favorite line of questioning is to ask him, What's up with your freaky eyes, old man? Uh, very tactful. <laughs> Are you itching for a fight or something? How dare you? 
I should kill you where you stand. Calm down, Zerdra. I'm not ashamed of what I've become. As you can see, I lost my eyes in a swoop racing crash. I rely on these artificial replacements to see now. But my blindness was not the worst consequence of my accident. My affliction was what eventually led to this war between my Bex and the Vulkers. What do you mean? When I lost my sight in the swoop bike accident, everyone assumed I would step down as leader of the hidden Bex and let Brezhik, my most trusted follower, take over. But with my ocular implants, I can still see well enough to lead this gang. And I knew Brezhik wasn't ready to take over yet. Unfortunately, Brezhik didn't agree with me. In a rage, he left to join our arch-rivals, the Black Vulkers. A lot of the younger gang members followed him, and soon he and his followers had taken control of the Vulkar gang. But why start a gang war with the Bex? Brezhik is a proud man. My decision was a public humiliation for him. Maybe if I had stepped down, this gang war could have been avoided. Don't fool yourself, Gadden. Brezhik wants to control the lower city gangs. If you'd stepped down, he'd have led the Bex against the Vulkars. He wanted this war, one way or another. <sighs> I know you're right, Zerdra. Brezhik won't rest until I am dead and the Bex are no more. But it's hard to accept the truth of his betrayal. I'll be going now. Feel free to come back anytime. We're not like those Vulkar savages. Strangers are welcome in the Beck base. Alright, I just really enjoyed that conversation. It tells you a little bit about what's going on with these, um, these gangs. And, um, you find out why his eyes are so cool looking. I just thought he happened to have really, really pale eyes. But it turns out he's blind, which is really a cool thing. I actually didn't find out because I was too tactful to ask him what was up with his eyes in previous playthroughs. But he's very tactful about it. Seems like a nice guy, but we are evil this playthrough, so we don't do nice. Why would we do nice? Alright, so now we can go to the lower city, but before I go, I want to get a few things done um, in the upper level at our base, or at our like apar abandoned apartment. So I'm going to do the the quick transport, um, the return to hideout, and then come back and head to the uh, undercity. Now we have some upgrades that we found, so I want to take a time, take a little time to do that, and uh, do a few. I want to do a few duels in the cantina. There are th two that I can do pretty easily at my current level. Um, there's uh, one that I can do if I'm like doing well, and the rest of them are too tough for my scoundrelliness. That's totally a word. But uh, here we can upgrade Kart's blaster. Um, this gives it uh, special properties. It gives an extra plus one to attack. Um, the attack modifier, I would assume, it probably just makes you uh, e easier to hit, which makes it sense with the scope title. Um, you can find various things you can upgrade with, but they do different things on different items. It just depends. See, like here we have the Achani fiber arm armor, and if we upgrade... This gives special properties to defense, but if we go to the Republic mod, uh, it gives special properties to defense, but it only gives one, the other one gives two. Wait. Oh. Huh, it looks... Yeah, okay, I, th I think that's still the case. Sorry, it looked, for a second it looked like the other one was one as well, but yeah. So, as you can see, they are different based on which armor they are. See, like, this gives that immunity mind affecting. And um, this one gives a damage resistance to cold and fire. So, uh, right now I'm wearing the uh, Chani fiber armor. And I actually think that the upgrades... I mean, obviously, this upgrade is better than the Republic mod upgrade. Because it's two defense instead of one. Um, actually, the damage res resistance means that if something that's fire or cold hits me, um, I won't take up, like, if it's less than 20, I won't take that damage. Like, it has to be over 20 for it to start doing damage to me, which is a really good thing. So we're going to put both that of those on the uh, fiber armor. And we don't have any left. Uh, if we had any left, we would put them on the Republic mod. All right. Let's see if Karth has anything to say at this point. Yes, what's on your mind? 
he does. So let's have a conversation with Kurt, and then we'll move on to the upper cantina. I want to continue our discussion from before. I thought I said I don't want to talk about it anymore. I think you owe me an explanation, Karth. Listen, sister, just because we're working together doesn't mean you get to go badger me with constant questions. You're damn right it does. Blast it if you aren't the most frustrating woman to talk to. Isn't there someone else you can harass for a little while? I'm frustrating. Look who's talking. What, me? What did I do? Oh, that's rich. Where have you been? Uh, okay, I give up. You win. Look, I suppose I could use someone to talk to. I'm just not used to it, and I don't know why you're so interested, but here goes. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most. Saul. That name sounds familiar. With good reason. Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. You didn't think he would betray the Republic? Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. Even when things looked to be at their worst, I just... I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. So you blame yourself for trusting a friend? I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid, and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I just had to do the evil side. Revenge. Cackle, cackle. I'd do the same thing in your shoes. Well, there's more to the story, I guess. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. All right, so Karth has issues. <laughs> Don't we all, Karth? Don't we all? Maybe not to that extent, but you know, it's okay. I still like you better than Caden from Mass Effect 2, so it's all good. All right, so I said I was going to uh, fast travel back, but I want to go to the Upper City Cantina since we're over here. I'll get a little money from duels. And uh, when we're done with that, I will end this video and move on to um, to the next video where we go to the Undercity. Going for a little jog. It's very good for my, my thighs, my glutes, my calves. <laughs> Gotta keep my womanly figure over here. Alright, here we are at the cantina. Hello, hello. Oop, wrong doorway. There we go. I actually prefer the um the hut in the lower level. I just think he looks cooler. But that's just me. Ja <laughs> I'm ready for a duel. <laughs> that made him awfully happy. Thank you, Dorban. I am a juice. Cochise, 
かなよほほほおとらやふけごこらじゅじわちゃんねちゅうとちゃんよんとろんちおえさぼらおんなちんねかばむれらくんびすけん Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. <laughs> You've seen him lose night after night after night, but this time he's after fresh meat. In this corner, I give you Dead Eye Duncan. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the terrace dueling scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name. The mysterious stranger! Oh my gosh, I love that announcer. He's not over the top at all. <laughs> all right, uh, Dead Eye Duncan is a pushover. Shoot him! Pew pew! Oh! Yep. It's over! <laughs> the fight is over! The mysterious stranger has I think won. that's the longest but I've ever really, had that fight go. Are any of us surprised? Dead Eye losing isn't news. You have to do better than that to impress us, stranger. Yeah, I tried to get fancy in the end and do one of those crit things. It wasn't even worth it. Um... But, yeah, I mean, that fight never lasts very long. I actually lost a tiny bit of health. That's pathetic and sad. Makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got some money, some credits, not that much, but... Alright, the conversation is similar, so I'm gonna go through it kinda quickly. I'm ready for a duel. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. <laughs> in this corner, Sorry, he one makes of you the laugh. a man so tough. Even a disfiguring injury couldn't end his career. <laughs> I give you girl on two fingers. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the terrace dueling scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name. The mysterious stranger. All right, this guy's pr not too bad, so um, he's ranged as well, so we can mostly just shoot at, at him at range, and we should be able to kill him reasonably enough. Oh, and I just realized I actually don't want to have two weapons. I changed it a, while, a few episodes ago and realized that it totally wasn't worth it. And I was also looking at my stats uh, when I they were increased by, I think, an electric electricity... Um, Thing, so I'm not to the point where it's worth it. So let's go back to one weapon. That's probably why I took so much damage from um, Duncan. <laughs> not that it was a lot, but like I don't think he's ever gotten that close to me. All right, so I'm just gonna stand back here, poke him down. That's really all you need to do. I have some med packs if need be, but I really shouldn't need them. And um, if you're playing pretty much any class. You probably won't need them, um, if you're like, I think we're level 4 at this point. 4 or 5, you should be fine. If you're a fighter, like if you're playing um, a soldier, you, this should be even easier. Um, these duels are easier if you are one of the more like fighting-centered classes. Even the scout um, does a little better in these, because they've got, you know, feats and... Uh, are slightly more combat based than we are. It's over! The fight is 
over. The mysterious stranger has won. Hooray. Gerlon losing to a rookie. Is this a sign that his injuries have finally caught up with him? Or is the mysterious stranger for real? Only time will tell. All right. So, we won that, but we did lose a little health, so... Gosh, we do not have much in the way of medpacks. Which is sad. All right, so, I was actually gonna do the next fight, but since I'm so low, we'll save it for later. All right, so we got the money. We got 200 credits for that, and uh, we'll move on our merry little way. Um, I should have checked my inventory before heading out this way. Uh, I did not realize that I was that low on med packs and such. Oh, wait. Jurgen. Well, hello there. I can see from your exotic appearance that you are not from Taurus originally. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jurgen. Hello, Jurgen. What do you want, Jurgen? What do you think of our local music? The band is quite good, wouldn't you agree? They're on the verge of intergalactic stardom, you know. I don't care much for the band. They are something of an acquired taste, but mark my words, they'll be famous soon enough. They were about to go on tour before the Sith quarantine stranded them here. Would you like to meet the band after the show? Maybe have a brief brush with fame before they become intergalactic superstars? I can arrange it, you know. I'll pass. Are you certain? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Meet the legends before they were famous. All it will cost you is a small handful of credits. I have a standing arrangement with one of the Rodian bodyguards backstage. For the small sum of 20 credits, he'll let me set up a meeting with you and the band. Sounds like you're running a scam to me. You sting me with your words. I merely thought I could offer you the rare opportunity to meet a celebrity before they were famous. But I see you're not interested. That's too bad. They really are charming fellows. Very well, then. I hope you enjoy the music. If you change your mind, come speak with me again. And he is actually a scam. I forgot about him, actually. I didn't run into him during my practice playthrough. Uh, I, one thing to note, um, Bendix Starkiller is our last bounty, and the only way to uh, kill him is to uh, finish all the duels and get to the last one, and you will challenge him to a fight to the death. Um, but I don't know if that's something that's going to be within our capabilities as a scoundrel. We'll see as the game, uh, goes on. Also, I don't want to over-level here in Terrace. Oh, I want to buy some med packs over here. I don't want to over-level in Terrace because, uh, later you do get a new class. And, uh, there is a level cap in this game. Hello there. I haven't seen you in my shop before. You look and mostly. We don't care sip. what she has to say. We just want to buy things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a level cap in this game, and the next class you get is pretty nice, and, um, I think more beneficial than anyone's base class, but, um, it's not too bad to level up some here, but I definitely would recommend holding off from taking, from leveling up too many times, but, uh, I've heard it said you can, you can hold off on levels. Um, I've held off, I think, as early as, say, like, level... I think the earliest I've kept my character, or the lowest level I've kept my character and gotten through this is level 4. But it is extremely frustrating. I don't really like the process of keeping myself so low level. I like leveling up a lot. So I probably won't be holding up off on leveling until we're toward the end of this, uh, part of the game. Alright, I don't know why I'm heading back to the apartments. So, uh, that should be it for this video. Uh, next video, I am going to go down to the Undercity, so I will see you guys there.